If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. Back on the show and with an impressive first round knockout victory to boot at UFC Vancouver over the weekend. Lewis Smolka is here and back on the program. How are you, man? Great, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations on the win. And many people were talking about your performance on Saturday night as the best performance of your career in the Octagon, maybe overall. Would you agree with those individuals? Was that the best performance of your career to date, do you think? Um, it definitely could be. Uh, that was my first time knocking somebody out with my hands, so that felt pretty great. Um, yeah, that was my first time racking up body shots like that, too. And um, it was also my first uh, first round finish in the UFC, so, I mean, there could be some merit to that. You just look so healthy at 135. You look very happy being a Bantamweight as opposed to being a flyweight. How much better do you feel being up a weight class and not having to cut that extra nine or 10 pounds on fight week? I feel great, man. Um, it's just, it's so hard doing that extra like few pounds. Like I get down to like 130, but everything after that is just horrible. Like I, I know that there's guys that weigh more than me. Like there's flyweights that weigh more than me out of camp. Like I think like Joe B gets up to like 160 or something. But like, he has fat and muscle to cut into, like, because he's shorter than me. At my height, I feel like cutting to 125, I'm cutting into, like, my bone and, like, my my organs, you know? Like, like there's nothing left. And how much weight do you have to cut to get to 35 now? Uh, maybe, like, 15 pounds, so it's, like, not that bad. It's pretty easy. Like, the whole, the whole cut was, like, two hours total. Like, it was not bad at all. Oh, so you'll take that any day of the week, and... You know, yeah, paid no, off. Was yeah, and you looked you looked fantastic. It showed in the fight because Ryan's a really tough guy. You did hit him with some big shots early. He was landing as well, and it was a lot of fun watching that fight while it lasted for those four minutes and fifty seconds or so. Were you surprised by anything Ryan did, or or about anything that happened in that fight? Um, I was surprised he did, he moved his legs more. Uh, I was trying to kick him in the leg a little bit more. He got hit with that a lot in his last fight. But um, he did a good job of kind of, like, positioning himself to where I couldn't really, like, get a clean kick on his legs. So, I mean, like, it shows he's evolving, so that's good. The last time you were here, you were very open and honest about a lot of different things, especially the the fight with Matt Schnell, how you weren't feeling great. You were dealing with a, a lot of different things heading into that fight, but you didn't want to, to, quote, be a bitch and pull out of the fight, and the fight went how it went. Did that situation make this win on Saturday that much sweeter? Yeah, um, you know, like, anytime you lose like that, there's, like, a lot of doubts running through your head. Like, even if I was not, like, at my best, it's still disappointing to lose quickly. And so um, I really wanted to rebound and get a big win, you know, and make a statement. So it felt great to get a first-round finish. Were you watching the rest of the card on Saturday, hoping that the rest of the fights were super boring, that it would be all decisions, considering how impressive that knockout was? Like, when Misha Serkinov got a freaking Peruvian necktie, were you like, really, dude, really? Like, that bonus just seemed, like, so close for you. How bummed were you that, that you weren't on that list? Um, I mean, I was on a on a Donald Cerrone uh, just engaged you card, so I kind of wasn't. I, I Like, as soon as that fight was announced, I didn't have that. I was like, oh, that's over. <laughs> <laughs> I think if that if if Serganov just got like a guillotine choke or you know arm bar or something, I still think he would have got it. Like considering how the rest of the fight went, like the the fight of the night, all the money went to Tristan Connolly, but there weren't a ton of finishes on this card, so you were a lot closer than you than you think you were probably. Oh yeah, it was like me, Augusto Sakai, uh, Justin Gagey, and Misha Serganov. I think were the only finishes. It was an impressive but, win, though, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I was happy, man. I'm just happy to get that win. I'll rack up more finishes. I'll get a bonus eventually. It's all good. Absolutely. Five wins out of six now. You just took out a really tough guy in Ryan McDonald. It was a, it was a very short night at the office for you. But, you know, when would you like to return? Have you thought about that at all? I know it's just four uh, days yeah, after you just I fought. Yeah, I think but... in like a couple months, honestly. You know, like, two, like, a few, like, like 10 weeks, 10, 12 weeks would be great, ideally. Um I haven't honestly like I've just been kind of relaxing for like a week. This is a long camp for us, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm ready. I'd like to go again pretty soon, at least one more before the end of the year. Um, I haven't really looked at the cards too thoroughly, so I'm gonna have to go through and like look and see what's on there and where I could fit in. But yeah, I mean, I'd like to fight before the end of the year. So November, December seems kind of like a, an appropriate timeline for you. Yeah, yeah, November would be cool. Does anyone really stand out to you right now at 135 that you'd like to get in there Honestly, with? Honestly, not off the top of my head. No, I, I, I haven't like I haven't really thought through too much. Like I was solely focused on getting this win. Like that was it. You know what I mean? Like, I just I was just looking at the fight in front of me. With your with your openness to to talk about the problems that you've dealt with with the the drinking, the adversity you've had to overcome to get to this point, have you had people? reach out to you asking for your advice, trying to garnish some wisdom from you because, you know, what you've done and what you continue to do is not an easy thing. Plus you're on the strong run as a professional athlete, as a professional fighter right now. Have you had a lot of people reach out to you for inspiration? Um, yeah, you know, a few people have like, um, talked to me and asked me like how I did it. And, uh, like I'll get DMS and stuff on Instagram or like Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Like people would just ask me like how I did it and stuff. And like, you know, I'll try to talk to them. There's some guy that I was talking to about, like he had like a gambling addiction. He was trying to figure out like how I kicked, how I kicked mine. He was trying to like look at some overlap, I guess, you know, like see if there's any overlapping principles and stuff. But yeah, man, like honestly, one of the biggest things that I would tell people is like, is to just change your routine. Like you got to change something. If you're, if you try to, if you're doing the exact same routine, but you're just trying to cut out the drinking, it's going to be hard, you know, because there's going to be things that remind you of it or whatever your addiction is. You know, if you have a routine, like it's, you got to break that routine and it'll be harder to like, or it'll be easier to like break your addiction. What did you specifically add to the table to kind of thwart that? Because obviously, like you just said, if you do the same thing, you know, drinking still going to be there. What did you do to kind of, you know, cross that off your like, list so, so to speak. like my my wife sent me up to california and i lived up in california for like probably like four months and then when i went back home to boy like um it was it was pretty crazy because i would like I, I was fine i wasn't really drinking but then um when i came back home like i would see like the same liquor store that i go to like i go like on my same like practice routine i'd go back home i'd see the same liquor store i want to go in there and drink and it's weird because i didn't really have like those like cravings before when i was like not in that routine but once i started doing the same thing like i started having the same like like cravings i guess and it it, it, it was kind of i i read about that too like with um with alcoholism and like addictions and stuff like like there's like schema or whatever like you would like be triggered so like I kind of like all the oh, man, I probably shouldn't like tell myself, you know. Is it hard to be in Hawaii seeing all those familiar things even now after you know sort of going through what you've gone through and, and putting that all in your head? Um, honestly, I'm not too sure. I haven't been back in a while, but I think I've got like a pretty good handle on it. Like I mean, there's some days still where like I want to drink and stuff, you know. But like I just gotta remember like that's not for me. I'm just not right now, you know. Really incredible performance, Lewis. Congratulations on the big win on Saturday. Great chatting with you as always. I know we just got you waking up, and I appreciate it very much. Any, uh, That's any, all good, man. yeah, any, any shout outs? Anything else you want to get off your chest before we let you go? Um, yeah, I just like to thank everybody, uh, Team Oyama, everybody that helped me get ready for this fight, Corey Beasley from Fight Camp Conditioning, uh, my dude Budo Matt from Tenth uh, Planet. Um, and just like uh, all my sponsors who have been there for me, helped me like get ready for this fight. Uh, G Fuel Energy, Virus, um, Defend Hawaii, Defense Soap, um, Trifecta Meals helped a lot. Uh, just you know everybody who's been who's been supporting me to this point. Just thank you guys. Thank you, Lewis. Enjoy the the rest of your R and R time. All the best to you, and we'll talk soon. All right, thank you, Mike.